if you ever go camping, there is one thing you do not want to leave home without. The Swiss Army Knife. Or in German, the Schweizer Officers und Schmutzmeister. It was U.S. soldiers after World War II who coined the term Swiss Army Knife because they couldn't pronounce the German name. It all started in 1884 when Carl Elsener, the fourth son of a Swiss hat maker, opened a cutlery workshop in Switzerland with the support of his mother Victoria. Then, in 1891, Elsener learned that the Swiss Army was looking for a new knife for their soldiers. The Army specified their requirements, and he got the assignment to go into production. It was called the Soldier Model, purposely made for taking apart the Swiss military service rifles by having a heavy-duty screwdriver incorporated into the knife, alongside a can opener and knife for the soldiers. Eventually, Elsener started producing knives of all kinds of professions, like the Boy Scout knife and Farmer's knife. But the name Swiss Army Knife was already carved into people's minds. So, how did the name for his company come about? It was to honor his mother who had passed. He took her name, Victoria, and the short French name, Inoxidable, meaning rust-resistant steel, and combined them. So, Victoria and Inox was formed into the company name Victorinox. Today, over 25 million knives are produced each year, and Victorinox has cut through the clutter of many other industries and offers other high-end items, including timepieces, travel gear, and apparel. It's the greatest thing since sliced bread. Now, the origin of the bread slicer. In 1912, Otto Frederick Rowetter had an idea to build a machine that could slice bread. By 1927, he designed a machine that not only sliced the bread, but wrapped it. Rowetter took his slicer to friend and baker, M. Frank Bench. He convinced him to use it in 1928. The brand name for their product was Slice Clean Made Bread. Customers loved the evenly sliced bread. It was great for making sandwiches and toast. Then another baker, Gustav Papendick, bought the second slicer. But he found bakers said the bread would dry out too quickly. So he improved the machine that cut better and wrapped the bread faster. Then, in 1930, the Continental Baking Company altered history forever. They introduced sliced Wonder Bread. By 1933, American bakers were turning out more sliced bread than not. Bars! There is nothing like 18 rounds of golf on a beautiful large golf course. But what if you don't have enough room or you simply want to play with the kids? Well, an alternative is miniature golf. Windmills, obstacle courses, and all. But how did this tiny version of golf come to be? Well, some say it started in 1867 at the Ladies Putting Club in Scotland. It was said that the conservative views at the time had deemed it was inappropriate for women to swing their arms in such a violent manner. Those golf swings could be pretty aggressive. So they built a more demure course. It was the first miniature golf course in the world. Large resort hotels would eventually offer these mini golf courses for their guests. The courses were one-tenth the scale of a real golf course. Then, one man shook up the golfing world with his artificial turf. Now, these mini courses were accessible everywhere. But then, in 1938, two brothers from Binghamton, New York, started to build a variation of the scaled-down versions of the courses. They introduced windmills castles, and fun obstacles. And then, in 1955, two other brothers introduced hazards that move, creating even more excitement. These courses are similar to the ones that we know today. It's illuminating. When confronted with darkness, it's always good to have a portable light source. Enter the light stick. But how does a light stick give off light? It turns out it all has to do with reactions. Chemical reactions, that is. You see, if you look inside a light stick, you will find a glass vial of hydrogen peroxide. 
which floats inside a solution of phenyl oxalate ester mixed with a dye solution. When you're ready to add a little light to your situation, you just need to bend the plastic stick, which breaks the glass vial inside, causing the hydrogen peroxide to mix with the phenyl oxalate ester. The chemicals instantly react with one another, making the atoms in the solution get all excited, which release light energy called photons. This reaction is called chemiluminescence. Once this chemical reaction starts, it cannot be stopped. No worries, just crack another one. Tomorrow at high noon, it's just you and me. <laughs> if you've ever watched an old western, there always seems to be a scene where two cowboys face off at high noon. But what time is that? For folks living in the Northern Hemisphere, noon is 12 o'clock p.m. Well, would you believe that high noon actually meant 3 p.m.? That's because high noon was supposed to be nine hours after sunrise. Noon comes from the Latin word nono, meaning nine. But over time, the phrase high noon became known as midday, and midday is 12 p.m. Eventually, the word was just cut down to noon. So, there you have it. The sun is set on the phrase high noon. Good evening, partner. <laughs>